each of you to go first and talk about the issue. Uh, I always feel that both of you have uh, quite a bit in common despite your different ideologies, beginning with JNU. Uh, he's still there, that's your alma mater. And also that your day jobs are quite different from uh, what you're actually known for now. But um, uh, uh, Mr. Prabhakar, would you like to go first and then we'll ask Anand to speak and then we'll do a Q&A based on uh, the conversation. Thank you very much, Kaveri. Good evening, everybody. Um, this is a, a very charged topic and a very loaded uh, title. Well, uh, my job is made much easier. In fact, uh, talking about New India has started becoming easier by the day. Um, a lot of people are making uh, uh, New India very easy to decode. And the latest one, of course, is uh, one Mr. Ramesh uh, Bidhuri. Yes. Um, and before that, of course, is Rish Mohan um, Sharan. Yeah. And of course, so many other people. They are really making um, the idea of New India very easy to decode. Well, I said that New India is a crooked timber. And Kaveri, you have titled this session as uh, New India Project, Crooked Timber or uh, Iron, Rich. Iron Rich. Iron Rich, of course, is, is also a right way to describe. Only thing is, if it is too iron rich, it's also toxic. So in that sense, of course, it's also iron rich. It's too much iron rich. Um, The new India that we live today is, of course, I have referred to Mr. Bidori, I have referred to um, Bridge Mohan and other people. Let me also draw your attention to a couple of things that are happening in the country, uh, in New India, of course. The first and primary thing that I would like to draw your attention to is that um, in New India, people and platforms who had absolutely no role in the long-drawn struggle for India's independence, today are able to market themselves as patriots. That is one. And the second one is you know, um, a huge collection of the so-called sadhus and santus, they gather and call themselves as dharma sansad and give a call for genocide, economic boycott, arm yourselves, have weapons at home and things like that. That's also a mark of uh, New India. And if you leave that, of course, in the, in the q and we can go into the details of these, but if you leave that domain and come into the, our day-to-day -day lives, the new India today is characterized by an economy which is almost broken. It has not recovered from the jolt that it has received during the demonetization, because of demonetization, after, the, of course, the, the uh, pandemic. Even today, it has not gone back to what it was in 2019, God only knows how it has overtaken so many other economies, etc., etc. But, you know, this is the thing. And the latest data tells us that, you know, the household savings rate is the lowest in three decades. And then, of course, um, you know, you have this, uh, uh, a, a, a discourse that goes on and on to say that India belongs to the people who practice one religion. And those who practice some other religion, although they have been here and they are here, they will be here, that it doesn't belong to them. 
if they have to stay here, they can stay here, of course, they are welcome to stay here, but content themselves to being a second class citizen or, you know, slightly different, to be treated differently. They should be, they should reconcile themselves to this kind of an idea of India. This is the idea of New India. And then, of course, you know, there's this uh, debate about uh, Sanatan Dharma, what is Sanatan Dharma, what is not Sanatan Dharma, and all that. Well, you see, and, and you know, New India, New India it now wants to go back and actually, it, it's, it's a misnomer to call this New India because they want an, an old India, a very old India to be restored. That is New India, anyway. You know, and how long do you want to go back? Do you want to go back 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 70 years, 80 years, 1000 years, 200 years, 500 years, 2000 years, 5000 years, 6000 years, 10,000 years? We do not know how long. You have to go and on, go and on and on and on and on. And they don't stop anywhere. So this past worshipping is the predominant mark of new India that we see today. And this in new, in new India, we have the highest youth unemployment, lowest labor participation ratio. And New India has added about 100 lakh crores to the national debt, which was just about 55 lakh crores, and it is added 100, 100, 100 lakh crores, it, it is now 155 lakh crores. And uh, Unemployment is very high, food inflation is very high, medical inflation is very high, private investment is, is absolutely at the low, lowest now. It used to be about 30%, now it's only 19%, 19 to 19.5%, or even 18.5%, it keeps fluctuating, but it is surely at a very low level. We can we, we, we do hear, of course, the, the, the government doesn't give us any statistics, any data anymore. You know, it, it is only you have to rely not on any government agency, but you have to go and rely on the CMIE and other uh, portals in order to get some kind of a thing. Um, and um, the direct taxes fall, corporate tax, tax, taxes fall, indirect taxes go up very high. We, you can have a look at the data that is coming out. And then, you know, sudden burst of activity to privilege, uh, you know, a, 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 a kind of a past which privileges caste, which privileges gender, which privileges religion, and that too, of course. You know, you know Kaviri, I just wanted to tell you this. You know, today morning, when I was coming here at your invitation, I came to the um, airport, Anand, and I heard the B B CIS of Jawan um, saying, one tray, one bag, one tray, one bag. You know, in the airport, you have to, when you get into the check-in, you have to keep, you, you are allowed to keep only one bag in a tray, one bag, one tray, one bag, one tray. Suddenly I thought, you know, why is he making a political statement? Because I keep getting bombarded, one nation, one election, one nation, one culture, one nation, one language, one nation, one religion, you know, all that one, 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 I thought it was one bag and one, one, uh, one tray. One nation, one language. Yeah, one nation, one language. As one wag said, one roti. Yes. So, this is the kind of, these are the hallmarks of new India. And the reason why I say it is a crooked timber, it is crooked timber because nothing straight can ever be made out of the crooked timber. India cannot progress. India cannot prosper. India cannot advance with this kind of a new idea of new India. It is against the plural, diverse, secular, democratic idea of New India. Thank you. Anand, you. <laughs> First of all, thank you very much, uh, Kaveriji and uh, uh, Dr. Prabhakar, uh, for having me on this wonderful panel. And thank you to the organizers for uh, having me here. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, 
I'll jump straight into uh, the discussion. Uh, the very eloquent uh, Dr. Prabhakar has laid out the groundwork and it's um, what appears to me, I think, initially is that everything that you talked about was uh, what we've heard over the last 10 years. So in a sense, we heard um, old India, old ideas, because uh, the way I perceive the political discourse or even non-political discourse over the last 10 years is that <clears throat> before 2014, everything was right about India. We had the world's best scientists, world's best, most honest politicians. We had the greatest roads. We had tap waters everywhere. We had every household had a bathroom, had a cylinder, had a bank account. We had the greatest cricket team in the world. We, we won 100 Olympic gold medals. And then suddenly, 2014, it was almost as if what scientists call the Cambrian explosion. Everything that could go wrong in India went wrong. Why? Because Modi came in. Suddenly, we had unemployment. Suddenly, we had Hindu-Muslim animosity. It didn't exist before. There was no religion called Islam or Hinduism or people fighting with each other. There, was, there were no communists in JNU. Everything was absolutely hunky-dory. And then suddenly Modi came and everything started to go wrong. This is the picture that has been projected over the last 10, ten years. years. And, and I, I want, want to, to tackle, tackle this, this uh, using, using two, two uh, roads. roads. One, one, I'd like, I'd like to, bring to bring in the wonderful, wonderful discussion, discussion that, that Kaveri, Kaveri had, had with uh, a previous, previous panelist, panelist about, about three hours, hours ago. ago. Um, I won't I name, name him. him. He's, he's a wonderful, has a wonderful, wonderful sense, sense of humor. humor. He's, he's from, from the same college, college and, and the university in India and abroad. And, and, and I can, I can talk, talk about, about him because he's not here. here. Uh, <laughs> uh, basically, basically, he's wonderful. He's he's wonderful. He's he's and he, he, he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind criticism. Although his party minds him whenever he criticizes. But, but honestly, honestly Kaveri, Kaveri, and, and this, this is absolutely, absolutely no reflection, reflection about, about the wonderful, wonderful discussion, discussion was riveting, but, but almost, almost every, every sentence, sentence that, that he spoke in, in those 30, 30 minutes, minutes was wrong, or misplaced, or, misplaced, or, or absolute, absolute lie. lie. When, when he, he talked, talked about he's a secular, secular fundamentalist, fundamentalist, I'm sorry, I'm sorry he's, he's not secular, secular at all. all. I, I am a secular, secular fundamentalist, fundamentalist, and I lament, lament the fact that India is not secular. Because in a secular, the definition of secularism is, that at church, church there, there is a complete, complete separation between, between church and state. How, How is India secular, secular when, when the government, government is controlling tens and millions and, and lakhs of rupees from Hindu temples? temples? How, How is, is the state, state controlling 110,000 Hindu temples and their revenue and still calling themselves secular? Why, Why is the state, secular state, state paying mollies and, and priests salaries? Why, Why are secular, secular government jumping over, over each other? other? To, to give, uh, to, to fund, fund pilgrimage, pilgrimage of senior, senior citizens, citizens who vote for them. Cutting, cutting across party lines. lines. Is this, this what secular, secular nations, nations do? So, so when, when the, the gentleman, gentleman himself doesn't know what secularism, secularism is, how can he call himself, himself a secular, secular fundamentalist? fundamentalist? Number, Number one. one. Number, Number two, he talked, talked about Nehru being an inspiration. An inspiration. I, I grew, grew up being, and Nehru was a dictator. Let's, Let's be very honest about it. The image that he created, and, and I'll tie this with the present discourse, Kaveri Rebi, yeah, because... Yes. Yeah. 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 He banned 30, 30 books, 20 films, films. he arrested journalists, he sacked governments that he didn't like, including the communist government in Kerala, he amended the constitution, he brought in the Press Act, the Draconian Act. Act. There, there is nothing that a dictator wouldn't have done that Nehru did not do. And Nehru is an inspiration. Number three, when, when he talked about the secular, secular credentials, credentials of this India, India and P.V. Narasimha Rao being a Hindu or a BJP first Prime, Prime Minister. The two, two most anti-Hindu draconian acts brought about by any Prime, Prime Minister living or dead that have been anti-Hindu were brought by P.V. Narasimha Rao. One, One is, is the Place of Worship Act, Act that, that bars Hindus from, from even approaching the courts to seek justice. justice to correct, correct the historical injustices of getting back, back their temples. temples. And, and number, number two, the Vakh Act, the two, two most draconian acts were brought in by the supposedly Hindu Prime Minister. Minister. So, so what, what can, can I say about when people, people are so lopsided? But, but here, here I tie this, because, because in the, the flight this morning, morning when I came here, here 
I had a gentleman sitting next to me. And he had a very curiously enough, very similar discourse that we were having. He was also lamenting, oh, this is new India, new India. And he talked about Viduri. And of course, I condemn what Viduri said, but he's not the first one. But, but in, in, in addition to Beduri being an emblem of New India, I also condemn Beduri for saying that Jews are apes and pigs, 265, claiming they are led by Satan, 460, calling them eternally cursed, 447, pronouncing them the worst of creatures, 986, and condemning them to hellfire, 455, 986. So if Beduri you are saying, has destroyed the parliament, would, would you, I wonder, be allowed to read these verses from a holy book inside parliament? I dare you to ban this book. The problem in this country is not new India or old India. The problem in this country is selectivity. When uh, uh, the gentleman sitting next to me, my dear friend from JNU, um, talked about new India and how discrimination is happening and all that stuff, I can, I can count 300, 300 documented instances of Muslim mobs perpetrating lynching, attempted lynching on Hindus, Dalits, and non-Dalits. Including yesterday, when a, 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 a Hindu Dalit woman committed suicide because the police in Rajasthan did not act when she was raped by a Muslim man. Including day before yesterday in Lucknow, when, when Saurabh befriended a Dalit, Dalit woman, spied her drink, raped her, recorded it, converted her, and it later turned out that Saurabh was Salim. This, this is the problem. problem. When, when you keep, keep on highlighting one instance, when you completely obliterate from your memory that, that Muslim mob goes, goes into a hospital in you, segregates the patients from Hindus and Muslims, and attacks Muslims, does not attack Muslims, spares them, attacks only Hindus, including a doctor, and his three-year-old Hindu child, but you don't talk about it. So naturally, you brainwash yourself, brainwash everyone else into believing that only Hindus are committing these crimes. Muslims are not. You, you brainwash yourself into believing that, that Nupur was the one at fault for simply quoting a verse, an Islamic verse, and all those millions who poured out on the street demanding a head were completely innocent that they are the ones who are Darawa. This is the problem in this country. How do we remove it? And I'll tell you briefly before we uh, end, a couple of minutes. I'll tell you the problem in this country is that Modi is blessed. Plain and simple. Because, because every anti-national step that, that he has taken, taken in the last 10 years, the, the opposition and my fellow panelists have supported him. Every anti-national act. You want, want me to give you five, five examples, I'll give you 10, 10 examples, starting with the farm, farm laws. These were the most important reforms this country had ever undertaken in the last 75 years. Why? Because, because rather than affecting just, just a few million people, it affected 44% of our active labor force, which is 550 million, more than 250 million farmers were affected by these farm reforms. Every opposition party had exactly these three farm reforms in their manifesto. Every Kisan union, every communist worker sold wanted these reforms. But when Modi brought it, why? Everything, all hell broke, broke loose. Every, uh, uh, you know, every highway was blocked. You had, had people, people being killed, killed. you had, had protests. protests. Why? Why? These, These reforms would have catapulted us from what is now 2,000 GDP per capita to 15,000 dollars GDP per capita per middle income economy. Because if there is one sector that is crying out for reform, it is the agriculture sector. But when Modi brings it, this is the new India. This is where you have all the discrimination happening. We don't know what. Let me give you another example and I'll I wait, wait for Kaveri to stop, stop me because otherwise, otherwise I can go on. But, but just, just another example, example. When, when you talk, talk about economic prosperity. Yes, I am for welfare, welfare state, state, but I am not a communist because I realize in science you do not repeat failed experiments. experiments. Every, every every government, every nation, every nation that, that has undertaken communism has been destroyed like Soviet Union and Venezuela. Venezuela. So common sense, sense tells me that the welfare, welfare state, state is possible only in a capitalist state. state. You, you have, have to generate wealth. You have to sell off your PSUs. There are 1,836 public sector units, 21% of our annual budgetary allowance of Ms. Sita Raman goes into propping up these sick public sector units. But who doesn't want Modi to sell these PSUs? It is the left and the opposition. Congresses do not privatize. When every anti-national act that Modi has perpetrated, 
the opposition is supporting how on earth will this country progress so the more people talk about new india they are talking about the old india which they want to survive for the next 1000 years so uh, i can see anand brings his fan boys and fan girls with him uh, a bit kya karu mera to delhi ko chahiye that's and yeah. lastly just 10 seconds when somebody talked about uh, somebody I talked anand about anand still thinks that he is on republic now no, 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 right no. you're you're on a panel we give enough time Don't i'm in worry. the republic of new india but i was just saying when you know uh, 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 the the good doctor made this thing about how people who had nothing to do with freedom struggle call themselves patriot i had nothing to do with i wasn't even born but i call myself a patriot and as far as people calling themselves patriot you had the founder of cpi dange writing gravely mercy petitions to the british ki mujhe chhod do jail se hata do nobody talks about that they only talk about savarkar okay so speaking about selectivity but the point i think is very interesting uh, uh, mr prabhakar or dr prabhakar sorry prabhakar is better yes i think it's very interesting he seems to suggest that new india is not new enough right he needs it to be harder stronger more muscular that modi actually is not doing enough and what he actually says in his book is that hindus in hindu rashtra eighth class citizens and victims of state sanctioned apartheid and he's listed eight steps that the government uh, of the day should take to actually make it a new india if i'm not mistaken if i understand your argument that's a slightly different take that's huh. that's just on how hindus are being discriminated right. new india when he was talking about the economic powerhouse were not being unemployment right. i'm just talking about the selectivity yeah. so there are two issues but i think but, yeah, but i think that's right. an interesting point that he seems to suggest that it's not new enough he needs it to be more he needs it to be harder the hindutva progressive the, and liberal okay yeah. if if you want to call it that what yes i what, mean <laughs> Uh, you know to have the farm laws that would affect 250 million people make them more prosperous how is that hindutva is got yes, nothing to do with hindutva are, but there are other economic prosperity that, there are other aspects that i will allow mr prabhakar to uh, talk about what do you think kaveri this is a, a literary festival hmm So we're dealing in words only. Yeah, I didn't want this to, you know, become into a coalition kind of a thing, you know, where I and Anand duel it out, and you know, yeah, and of course entertain people. You know, already they are being They're entertained. They're quite entertained. Yeah, entertained. I didn't want to do that. Um, I will leave um, a, a couple of thoughts with you, with everybody. I also do not intend this to be. a uh, discourse on uh, modi or uh, you know kaveri or anand it's not it's just generally about india or an unnamed uh, secular fundamentalist uh, no i am i'm, I'm, I'm I, i just do not know uh, you know that kind of a session at all i wasn't here i just came came in i didn't know about what happened before uh, it's it's not that it's not that uh, that's not the topic also what i'm trying to understand by the new india that we are talking about um not that you know the problems came just today yesterday or 2014 or x or y became uh, president or uh, prime minister it's not that india always had problems dare i say that india will always have problems mankind will always have problems the point is this what kind of a problems do we have and how do we approach those problems what kind of a solutions do we work towards whether we are able to solve or not is a different thing altogether i don't think any country on this globe has ever solved all its problems that's a different thing but what is your approach if i start talking about you belonging to a particular religion i belong to a particular religion anand belongs to a particular religion and we are privileged or not privileged on the basis of 
the religion that we practice. And the religion that you practice, Kaveri, is as a result of an accident of your birth. The very fact that you're an Indian is an accident of your birth. The very fact that, you know, I'm a Telugu is an accident of my birth. I did not choose to be a Telugu. I did not choose to be a Hindu. I did not choose to be uh, a particular caste, whatever. But, you know, in a, in a modern, as Anand had said, modern, liberal, secular, so yeah. whatever, uh, polity, I'm not talking to you as, you know, what your forefathers have done to my forefathers. I'm talking to you, look, this is the land that we are living in, and we are, have reached a particular phase of our civilization, of our evolution, and we think that democracy may not be the best form of government, but every other form of government is slightly inferior to democracy. And I'm not talking about which law is good, which law is not good. Maybe a law is very good, a bill is very good. I'm talking about the process of democracy where, you know, you pass, as Anand said, it affects more than 200 million people, you know, uh, more than half of the economy, et cetera, et cetera. But then you pass those two or three or four bills without even talking about it for even 10 minutes. And even to withdraw, you don't talk about it even 10 minutes while you're withdrawing. I mean, you did not talk about it even for 10 minutes when you introduce and you pass. And you, when you withdraw, you don't even talk about it for even 10 minutes while we are withdrawing it. You know, this is, you know, democracy is not just about, election. about having elections every five years. It is a process. It is a democratic practice, a democratic mindset. You talk about things, you discuss things, and even, even a smallest minority, if it has a point of view which is valid, you take it on board. That is democracy. I'm not saying that, look, you know, I, I, I'm elected for five years, just don't talk to me. I won't talk to you for five years. Talk, let talk, talk, talk to me, you know, after five years. That, that's not democracy. Now, if you say that, look, India is not prospering only now. India did not prosper before also. But let me make this point. About wealth creation. This is a very interesting point of view where, you know, this whole neoliberal attitude of privileging the wealth creators is, has a political counterpart to it, Kaveri. I would, I would just take another minute and, and talk about this. Now, in 2014, since Anand has talked about 2014, you know, 2014, but till 2014, Anand, we had about 125 billionaires. Sorry? 125 billionaires. Billion? Bi billionaires. 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 Not you and me. Billionaires. Today, you know how many there are? 145. Am I proud of them? Well, not really. Because for the last these many years, 10 years, nine and a half years to be precise, on the one hand, we had we added about 20 to 25 billionaires, but we added about more than 35 million people to the numbers who are already below poverty line. Am I proud of the 25 billionaires or am I sorry about those 35, 40 million people who have fallen into, into poverty? But what is that? This is the choice. No, no. We, we don't have ah, data. I'll tell you what. We I don't have proper data. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. How many people died during COVID? We don't have data. We don't have data. How many people are unemployed? We don't have data. How many? How many? One minute, Kaveri. How many migrant labor have uh, you know? How many? How many hospital beds and how many ventilators? We don't have data. But, but, our prime minister tells during his campaign in Karnataka that he was abused by opposition leaders 99 times, not 100 times, not 28 times. Very precise. For those things, we have data. 
that is the problem that we have now i was talking about the you know wealth creators wealth creators are needed in order to give you employment you know establish industries etc etc they are good people let them become rich after that when they become rich eventually you and i also will become rich because it trickles down it doesn't stop there you know a b c d don't keep all the wealth they have to invest somewhere they will invest somewhere but they are not investing that's a different thing you know investment private investment in this country used to be about 30 32% today it is 19% in spite of what the investors what the industry is talk about the government is very good and all that but you know every year not less than 1 lakh 50000 people are relinquishing the citizenship of this country and going away on all all these are mostly high net worth individuals but the political counterpart to this is you know let them prosper let them become billionaires they make wealth first ah they are good they will but the political counterpart carry is this you know hindus are good let them be the first class citizens they will look after you well they will they will they will take care of you they never did anything wrong before they have not invaded any other country they have not harassed anybody you know all the, therefore the political counterpart is privilege one section of the people they will take care of the rest they are magnanimous they are good in economic counterpart is let these people create well they let them become billionaires let it will slowly trickle down you know the political trickle down theory and the economic trickle down theory these two are the hallmarks of this new india which is very very dangerous i am laughing so no, i am not I, you know if earlier i had doubts about uh, converting with a person from jnu now all those doubts are gone this is a absolute delight i had you know uh, but uh, at least one billionaire uh, mr prabhakar would have been happy about george soros looking by his conversation that he's talking about but what are we talking about here i mean are we reinventing the wheel are we talking about marx and how marx and engels and all those things that they are done and dusted over the last 100 years we want to bring them back about this want and need and so many billionaires and trickle down and we should stop at 75 years in nehru we can go before that <laughs> nehru was a communist by the way but i mean the point of the matter is look as i said in science you don't repeat failed experiments you call the fool but in politics you always do and that is the tragedy people know socialism has destroyed this country and yet we have freebies yet we were i think the most pertinent example that we took and we do agree a little bit on that or at least i coax him to agree with me on were the farm reforms now i don't know whether he agreed with those farm bills or not but the point of the matter is that all political parties except the bjp opposed the farm reforms even though they were there in the manifesto even though sharad pawar when agriculture minister cried out for those three very reforms although even though congress manifesto of point number 11 point number 99 of them were written even though raghuram rajan opposed the msp all those every one of those people wanted the farm reforms now when you say he is right about suddenly repealing them i agree but bringing them on it took 16 years swaminathan committees and hundreds and thousands of deliberations and later on it turns out supreme court committee 82% of farmers wanted those farm reforms but you know what disappoints me is not the politicians they are hypocrites they are selective it's their job to be dishonest so when they bring back farm reforms or take back i don't care what destroyed me and disappointed me was the action of the supreme court and i i said it publicly i wanted the chief justice to be arrested for what he said because you know what he said he said i only see the people protesting the farm farm reforms i don't see the people supporting them did he want 200 million farmers who were farming in far flung areas of telangana kerala tamil nadu to drop everything they were doing drop the production of farm produce and come to supreme court and outside telak mark and do a dharna like they do in jnu and say we want farm reforms should this nation run by anarchy or by rule of law this is the tragedy when you it's nothing to do with hindutva please i mean those are other issues i want india to progress and when you talk But about Anand, we that are... is the issue isn't it we cannot look away from hindutva can't i mean you cannot have a member of parliament 
speaking the way Biduri does. That dog whistling is over. Of course. It sounds and loud and clear. Hatred for the other. By the way, a member of the India Alliance, his father said exactly the same thing about circumcision. Let us not be and so selective now. We exactly. have to go back to this. No, what the about point is, if you condemn, then condemn universally, like I do. Of course Don't be selective. Do. Don't just pick and choose the kind you, you want to pick and choose and free, new India. You call yourself a free speech absolute. I am a free speech absolute. I, so I, don't, I, I don't mind Viduri or anybody else saying whatever that person said because it comes under the free speech. I also don't mind that Danish Ali supported a candidate of BSP in the previous election who said he will offer 51 crores to the people who decapitated the Charlie Hebdo journalist. And he lost by only two and a half thousand votes. Did uh, this panelist out here condemn? No, he didn't because you're selective. But that's all right. I don't mind it. Politicians are. They have to be selective. So what's, what's the problem, Anand? The problem is what, who, politicians Who is your not... enemy? The politician? No. Supreme politician. Court? Yes. How many, how many enemies? How many public enemies do you have? I, I have one public enemy because that's the last door I can knock on. And if that you person You've already been accused me, of contempt of court by them. Have, there is a case against there, me. There's going to be another one, I think. For a speech of someone who's, by the way, apologized, but I haven't apologized. So I might go to jail. But no, you no, see what I mean? No, no, your forward has been written by Saidi, but he'll take lesson, care of you, I'm lesson. sure. <laughs> but you see, Kaveri, the problem is, I, you, you saw what happened. Let me give you the example of Shah Banu, a poor widow. All she demanded was 25 rupees in alimony. And Supreme Court gave it. But it was overturned because of political expediency. So when governments, politicians want, they placate their vote banks. I don't want Supreme Court to do that. And you know the only time when they say, oh, constitution is dead, democracy is dead, all the institutions are dead, Supreme Court is dead under Modi. You know, the only time Modi has overturned a Supreme Court judgment, every other political party supported Modi. That was the draconian version of the SCST Act that the two Supreme Court judges said, we will not follow. But Modi overturned it. So Every one of them kept quiet so because is, of vote bank. So they is, don't care about what is right or wrong. So is they Modi about, also public enemy for you? He is. Really? I say it openly. You want to talk about corruption? You know, when people say this government is corrupt. Mr. Prabhakar? I say he is corrupt. Me. I say he is corrupt, but he is not being stopped from being corrupt because I'll give you one example if you give me 30 seconds. FCRA amendment. The high, I don't care about that. <laughs> Let's not change the topics. You know, when we, when we are going in a flow, either you rebuke the argument or you... No, 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 no. Continue, please, so, please. <laughs> yes. I can also play victim card. No, I don't have a victim card. <laughs> no, no. Then, no. Uh, you see, Anya, you're a scientist the, from Cambridge, yes, so, so, St. Stephen's. You have so, no you see, victim card. You okay. cannot play anything. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what I was trying to say was that the high court convicted the BJP of corruption, of violating the FCRA guidelines in getting money for the political party. The punishment is five years imprisonment for the political head. Conviction. You know what happened? Within a week, the FCRA Act was amended in the parliament by the late Sri Arun Jaitley. Going up to the emergency era 1976, the high court and the punishment was rendered toothless. This was an issue where the opposition, if it wanted, could have absolutely obliterated and killed Modi and BJP, but they didn't. You know why? Because the High Court had also convicted the Congress for the same crime. And the Congress supported the BJP and Jaitley in amending the FCRA Act. See, I have this to is see, the problem in this country. I have you to don't go by that, science, yeah. you go by politics. I and I to, say, I never to, mix politics and science because all you will end up with is political science. <laughs> I have to say that I was right at the beginning. These two have more in common with each other than, <laughs> than anything else. Anand said very well that you'll end up, if you mix science and politics, you'll end up with political, political science. Which you are, a political scientist. No, no, no. You, you'll end up with, no, you'll end up with the entire political science. Ah, the entire, the entire syllabus of political science. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Somebody is making a degree in entire politics. Of course, that's what I said. Entire, it was the entire syllabus. Entire political. Political. Entire political. 
Sorry. So uh, as I said, uh, I think I can safely say that they agree with each other much more than they disagree. And today he's listed uh, uh, the prime minister among his public enemies as well. Uh, I don't know what fate will befall him. But uh, as I said, he also has Sai Deepak on his side. So that wife just told me there's a raid happening at my house. Right <laughs> Uh, as, as I said, he also has Sai Deepak on his side, so he'll take care of his, uh, uh, you know, uh, lawsuit. And thank you both. Uh, yes, I think we had more than in, enough entertainment today as, uh, you know, the gladiator. Absolutely delightful, and I invite Mr. Prabhakar to JNU. I'll arrange the visa for him. <laughs> Uh, make sure that there are no midnight uh, knocks and you know uh, people in masks moving around with lattes or whatever it is that they do. Are you safe these days? Are you allowed to go to your lab? And absolutely. Are you I'm to... on the other side of the iron curtain in GNU. So absolutely. <laughs> Great. Thank you all very much. Uh, I think it was delightful. Uh, I think at least we can still have these conversations in this country. Uh, which tells me that there is some spark of democracy still very much alive. Uh, so thank you both very much. Thank, thank you. you. Real pleasure. Thank you.